In this video, you'll learn how PHP frameworks such as Laravel and Symfony choose which code to run based on the request, a process that uses a component called a router. Once we know how routers work, we'll add one to the framework we're building. So far in this series, we've created code that outputs the content of a page based on a value in the query string. So we can pass different values in the query string variable and see the contents of that page. However, we still need to pass this value in using the query string. If we omit it, then we get an error. It would also be beneficial to have pretty or clean URLs instead of having to specify the page using the query string. So for example, the home page with nothing else in the URL like this. The list of products page would just be slash products and so on. Cleaner URLs would be more readable, so they're easier to remember and share. They're better for search engine optimization and they're more secure as they can hide the fact that we're using PHP. Don't forget, even though we don't have to include index.php in the URL because it's the default, this is still the file we're requesting. So in order to have clean URLs, we need to decide the response based on the path portion of the URL, not a query string variable as we're currently doing. So let's start by creating a variable that contains the URL path. We could get this from the server superglobal, but now that we're using a PSR7 request object, we can get it from there instead. The getURI method returns an object that represents the URL and we can use the getPath method on this to get a string with the path. So we can see what this contains. For now, let's just output that variable and temporarily exit the script. So now in the browser with this URL, we just see index.php. If I specify a clean URL like slash list, then we just get that part printed out. If I remove the path entirely, then we just get a slash. Note that the path is just a slash, even though this isn't shown in the address bar. So we can pass any path at all, and the front controller, index.php, is still executed. The reason this happens is because with the PHP development web server, if no explicit script is specified, the index.php script is called by default. This is why URLs such as slash list still work. This is fine for development, but eventually we'll want to deploy this to a production web server. This will require some additional configuration. For example, if I try a similar URL, but using a local install of the Apache web server, then we get a not found error. We can fix this for Apache with a configuration setting. The simplest way to do this is to add an HT access file to the public folder. In here, let's specify the fallback resource directive with a value of index.php. Now in the browser, we get the same results as with the PHP development server. If you need the equivalent configuration for another web server, then please let me know in the comments. Now we have the path, instead of just printing it out, let's decide the response based on its value. So instead of getting the page value from the query string, let's use a match statement with the path variable. Let's add an arm that matches a single slash and returns home, one that matches slash products and returns list, and one that matches slash product and returns show. So the values are the same that we previously passed in using the query string, which are the file names without the .php extension. However, Note that the strings that match are no longer linked to the actual file that's being loaded. So now the clean URLs work. The home page is shown when there's no URL path and both the slash products and slash product URLs work too. Note we could have added a default to this match expression to show a 404 response when the URL doesn't match, but we'll look at 404 pages later on. So what we've created here is a very basic router. This decides what response to return based on the path in the URL. The conditions in the match statement are known as routes. 
This works for fixed paths like this. But we also might want to have variable values in routes, such as the ID of a product, or the slug of an article, and so on. We also might want to route based on the HTTP method used, as well as the path. This is something that is common in APIs. For example, GET and POST requests to the same URL path do different things. So while we could develop this router further to include this functionality, there are many fully featured, mature and stable third-party router packages that have already been developed. If we search the PHP package repository for router, we can see what's available. Note that the Symfony router package, as well as being used in Symfony itself, is actually what Laravel uses as well. I'm going to choose the PHP League router because it's fast and integrates well with other packages we'll use later on. Let's install that on the command line with Composer. Now we're using this router class, we no longer need to process the URL path from the request directly, or match the path to the page with this match statement. To use the router, first let's create an object of the router class. And of course this needs a corresponding use statement. Then we define routes and the code to run when the route matches. So let's call the map method on the router, first specifying the HTTP method that this route will match, in this case get. Then we specify the path that will match, in this case just a single slash for the home page. We follow this with a handler, which is the code that will run when the route matches. There are a few ways we can do this, but for now, let's just specify an anonymous function. Inside this function, we need to return a response object. We're doing this below, where we're using the output buffer to capture the output that results from including an individual page file. Then we're creating a response object with that content. We could move this code to inside the handler function. Then change the require line to specifically require the home.php file. However, as we've now decoupled the request from the file that's being displayed, let's keep this simple and just return a response whose body is a simple string. We'll see later on how page content is separated into view templates. Also, to keep this simple, let's remove the custom status and header from the response. At the end of this function, let's return the response object. Below this, let's add another route that will match the HTTP GET method for the slash products path. When adding a route, we can use the MAP method and specify the HTTP method as the first argument. Alternatively, there are convenience methods available for each HTTP method, so we don't need to specify the method as the first argument. So in this case, we would use the GET method. The other available methods are POST, PUT, DELETE and so on. In the handler for this route, as above, let's just return a simple response. Likewise, let's add a route that matches the slash product path, again returning a simple response in the handler. We are repeating ourselves a bit here, but we'll clean this up later on. Now that we have these routes, we can match them to the request. This is a process known as dispatching. So to do this, we call the dispatch method of the router, passing in the request object. This returns the response object from the route that matched. Then the emitter can emit this response as before. Let's try that, and the home page still works, as does the products page and the individual product page. Just to keep things tidy, now we no longer need them, let's delete the home, list and show files. In addition to routes that match fixed paths like this, we can add variable parts to the route. For example, let's see how we might get the ID of a product for the single product page. One way to do this would be to use the query string. We can get this from the request. To get access to the request object in the handler, we can specify it as the first argument to the handler function. 
the router will pass the current request object to the handler when it's called. Then, inside the handler function, let's get the ID value from the query string. Then include this value in the body of the response. Let's try that, going to the slash product path and including an ID value in the query string. That works, and we get the value from the query string printed out. This works for any value. While this works, and is a perfectly valid way to do this, a more common way is to include the ID as a URL segment instead of part of the query string. To specify a variable part of a root, we put a variable name in curly braces as part of the root path. Note that a root path can have more than one variable if you need it. Any root variables will be passed to the handler function in the second argument, which is an array. So, inside the handler, instead of the query string, we can get the ID from this array. Note that named arguments don't work in the arguments to the handler method, so we still have to pass the request in as the first argument, even though we're not using it. Let's give that a try, changing the ID to a segment of the path instead of a query string value. That works for whatever value we supply in that segment. Note that this will match any value at all. If we want this to match just a string of integers for example, we can add a condition to the variable with a colon followed by the condition. This particular router has some predefined conditions such as number, although you can specify a regular expression too. So now a root variable that isn't a number doesn't match, and results in a not found exception. For a numeric value, the root still matches. We'll look at how to handle not found exceptions in a later video when we look at error handling in a framework. Have a look at the official documentation for this particular router package for more details on the available patterns that we can add to root variables. So now, by adding a router, we've disconnected the path in the URL from the code that runs for each route. This allows us to have clean URLs, which are easier to read, remember, and are better for SEO. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.